guys, I did it. I jumped on the hype train and I failed. I've sold the Sony ZV-E1. So here's the thing, honestly, I'm not even upset. I tried it out, I bought the camera, I spent all the money and it just did not work out for me. And the reason why I'm not upset that it didn't work out for me is because I'm happy that I had the chance to test it out so I can make this video so that you guys don't fall into the same boat that I did because the Sony ZV-E1 is a pretty expensive mess up. Now, the second reason why I'm not too messed up about it is because, well, right now I'm filming on a different camera than the Sony ZV-E1, its replacement. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later on in this video. Okay, so let's jump into it. Why did I sell the camera? Um, and why did I even buy the camera in the first place? I know you know that I made those mistakes maybe once or twice. Well, if I'm being honest with you guys, when it first came out, I was just excited that they put so much into such a small camera and I could carry this around with me super easily in my backpack. And honestly, that's where that camera lived. I just always had it with me in my backpack, obviously, until I got rid of it. So before I dive into why I sold the camera and what scenarios did I use this camera in successfully and unsuccessfully, why aren't you guys subscribed yet? <laughs> I'm looking at the analytics right over here behind the camera and literally I can see most of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you could do me a huge favor by going ahead and subscribing and then commenting below, subscribe. I'll like it. I'll like those comments. I'll read the comments below and I appreciate it when you guys subscribe and comment. That's awesome. Okay, so first, the reason why I bought this camera is strictly for content creation. But after I purchased this camera for $2,300, guys, it was so hard for me not to try to take this on professional shoots. So that's immediately what I did. So I tested this camera out first on on podcasts. The first podcast went amazing. I recorded for about 40 minutes in 4K, 24 frames per second, no issues at all, obviously in a cool environment. And honestly, the footage was amazing. I wasn't surprised that the image quality looked so good compared to these really expensive cameras. The sensor and the quality that you get and the dynamic range out of this little camera is just amazing, which is so tempting to take on professional shoots. Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durk, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Now next, I move over to commercial style shoots. I tried this out on a few commercials. And guys, that's where I ran into my very first issues, where the camera began to overheat. The camera wasn't overheating when I was shooting. It was overheating just because it was simply on. So what I mean is I turned the camera on and I would leave the camera on as I'm composing my shot. No monitor, nothing attached. Uh, maybe for about five to six minutes. The camera would be just sitting on a tripod, um, not recording at all, and it would just overheat. No, I was doing nothing. I wasn't recording, no HDMI cable plugged in, no power cord plugged in. Just sitting there in a cooled environment, um, it overheated. And so that's the first issue I began to run into. Now, like I said, I didn't only use this camera for professional shoots, but I also used it for what it's made for, content creation. I would make videos here at home, out on the go, and different things like that as well. And for the most part, I didn't have any issues there obviously because it's a content creator's camera. Even filming in the newly released 4K 120 frames per second, typically I was filming at about only 15 seconds every time I pressed the record button and stopped it. It's so unpredictable because I filmed for over an hour with this camera um, on a podcast in a room that's at like 67 degrees and it overheats. Uh, or it's just sitting on a tripod. It overheats. But then I go record another podcast for over an hour, no overheating. And then I go record 120 frames per second in 4K out in 102 degree weather for an hour, no overheating. Really weird and very unpredictable. Okay, so we're recording here in the studio right now, knocking out a bunch of short form videos. And I was recording for an hour and 11 minutes, probably 13 minutes on that camera. And we finally have gotten it to overheat for the very first time. That was not my intentions, but I've shot 
quite a few times now and I recorded this time like I said for an hour and 13 minutes and the camera just it shut off. I'm almost done complaining. Just give me just give me two more points to complain about and I promise I'll be done. So the second thing is that this camera has the best 4K available via the USB-C port. So what I mean by that is that all the Sony cameras, the newer ones like the Sony FX3, the Sony FX30, the Sony A7 IV, the Sony ZV-E1, and the list goes on and on, those cameras can just connect to your computer through a USB-C port. Super easy, um, there's not really much you have to do. However, the 4K options coming out of those cameras to your computer are really weird frame rates. Like you get 4K at 15 frames per second. That's really not usable for something like a zoom call or things like that. Sony ZV-E1 gives you 4K at 30 frames per second via the USB-C port, which is obviously very useful. And so that was one of the reasons why I was really excited about this camera as well, because now I can actually get a 4K web camera that has a usable frame rate. Um, and I did try to use it that way. And I'm sure that you guys know where I'm going with that. The camera overheated. Every single time I jumped on my Zoom calls, I jumped on a FaceTime um, via my computer using the USB-C port on the Sony ZV-E1. Every single time the camera overheated. Was I recording? No. Did I have the camera plugged into my USB-C port? Yes. It overheated. It's, it's unusable. Like that is completely unusable. If I can't sit my camera on a tripod in a 67 degree room and be able to plug in the USB-C port for a meeting um, and, it, it, and it overheats. So this weekend I was shooting with some friends. I was shooting their podcast, the LOL podcast. By the way, podcast has been doing awesome for these guys. You should go check it out. They just started it like a week ago um, and it's already like the clips from it are already way in the millions, yada, yada. It, it's incredible and it's actually really really funny so so this weekend we were batch shooting all of their podcasts because guys i have a baby coming next week which is obviously very exciting the camera just overheated so many times and so i had to stop the recording whenever i put a new battery in for some reason it continued like regular like immediately after and then in between podcasts i would literally have to take the camera off the tripod and go stick it in the refrigerator guys that's that's that just is not gonna work for me i know i know you guys are screaming at me right now in the comment section or just in general just like well you idiot this is not made for professional work and you even said that in your last video yes i get it but here is the biggest problem with the sony zv e1 it's too expensive for just content creation. If you buy the Sony ZV-E1 and you know how to do video productions and things like that, guys, this camera for $2,300, that's an expensive camera just to only make TikToks with, just to only make YouTube videos with if you're not a full-time YouTuber. Guys, this camera is expensive. And so the fact that it's just sitting there and it has all of these features that my high-end Sony FX3, my Sony a7 IV, my Sony, well, I can't tell you what the new Sony is, but that new Sony camera, it has all of those features and cost almost just as much as a few of those camera options. Now, here's the thing. If the camera was $1,500, would I have sold it? No, I 100% would not have sold the Sony ZV-E1 if it was around $1,500. But with it being at $2,300, it's just so hard to justify only using that camera for TikTok videos, social media content, um, and not being able to use it on a professional shoot. So yeah, that's my hot take and that's the reason why I sold that camera and I switched to the Sony FX30. All right, so yeah, I mean that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I will be making some content with the Sony FX30. If you guys are interested in any comparisons that I can offer for you guys, please just let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, I have the Sony a7 IV, the FX3, the FX30, and the Panasonic S52X. So yeah, I have those cameras and I can make some comparisons if you need. Just let me know. We'd love to do that. But for now, go ahead and check out this video right over here to pass some time.